Hello and welcome to the lecture on CSS basics. So let's understand what is CSS. So CSS stands for cascading style sheet. That is the full form of the CSS. And what is that style means? Style means adding colors, adding, increasing the font of the text. Basically, you are giving a look and feel to your website. Okay. So that's what the cascaded style sheet means. Okay. So let's look at what is the purpose of CSS. So we know HTML is used to describe the structure of the web page. Then what CSS does? Well, CSS is used to design the content on the web page. So HTML does one job of structuring all the elements together. It doesn't do the designing part. The designing part is done by the CSS. When I say designing again, adding the colors, laying out the elements in, in a proper format. You want header to be on top, footer to be on the bottom. You want the sidebars all those moving of the elements on the page and increasing the font, decreasing the font, changing the color of the fonts, you know, adding all those styles to your page is done via CSS. When we have looked in HTML, wherein you can just write plain old HTML and then whatever you write, browser decide what color to be shown and what size to be shown. In CSS, you basically override them. You override all those basic styles and then you start defining how you show your font should look like, what is the color of the font should look like. You can even change all the default settings of all the default tags in the HTML. Okay. So CSS is used to design the content on the web page. So let's look at what are the things you can control via the CSS. Just a very high level overview of what you can do with CSS. Well, CSS help to control the layout of the page. When I say layout, you can move things around. When we looked at HTML, you were not able to move anything apart from just doing the align left, right and center, right? You can actually move things around all the elements inside the page via the CSS. Then you can change the color of the text. You can change the size of the font. You can actually add the spacing between the text. So you can decide when two elements come together, how much space you want. You can decide all those things via the CSS. You can decide the height and width of the elements. Basically, you are doing the complete web page look and feel via the CSS. So understand the difference between HTML and CSS. CSS is styling the page, creating the design of the page. You are changing the look and feel of your website. You are adding colors, you are changing font, moving things around, you know, and then you are trying to give a nice look and feel for your website. That is done via CSS. CSS main purpose is to style your website. Okay, so let's look at some of the usages of CSS. CSS are written in a file with extension .css and it is linked into the HTML pages. In the next lecture, we'll understand how many types of CSS you can link into your HTML. One of the way is to write into a .css file and then include them into a HTML page. The other way is also possible, but this is one of the way. You can load the CSS once per page and it will manage the entire page layout and the presentation. So you don't have to write multiple CSS. Well, it's up to your choice, but you can still have one file, all the CSS dump into it. And then that CSS will can control the whole website. And it helps to change the page layout based on the screen and site is viewed on like mobile, tablet or computer screen. Okay, this is basically the responsive web design, wherein you can choose to have different size and width of your website based on which media that they are used. When I say media, it could be mobile, tablet or computer screen. So this has been controlled with the CSS. CSS helps to separate the presentation work from the HTML page and the developer can actually focus on building the content and displaying it separately. So there are two teams. One team can just focus on writing the HTML page and one team can really focus on designing the things. Okay. That's basically the differentiation between HTML and CSS. So the global standards also suggest that you use CSS and do not use any HTML attributes to style the tag. If you look at any of the HTML tags, you will still found some of the styling attributes available in the HTML. So it is a global standard. Remember this standard. If you are writing HTML and CSS, make sure all your stylings go to CSS. Don't write any stylings in the HTML. Okay. HTML attributes, the tag attributes have some styling. Stop using it because now with the CSS, you should move all your styling to CSS. And also for our projects, we typically tend to use CSS. We don't really write anything in the HTML. All right. So let's look at an example of an CSS. 
let's say someone ask you to do this task someone say okay you have an h1 tag and it is black in color so can you change the h1 tag output which makes the text in red in color and increase the font size by 12 points okay maybe the font is 10 size 10 points you want to change it from 10 to 12 and you want to change the color from black to red okay this is not possible in html because you can still use some attributes to do it but that is not recommended to do this kind of job wherein you are changing the color increasing the font you know this kind of stuff is done in css and how it is done this is how it has been done in css okay the one that is on the left hand side is called as selectors selector is nothing but the rule which says that where this rule has to be applied okay so as of now using this selector it is saying apply this rule on the h1 tag okay that's what the selector is saying then you have the curly braces open and curly braces close all these styling that you're writing for h1 tag is under this curly braces so all this styling or properties that you're writing is called as declaration block okay you're declaring the css inside the declaration block okay and you see there are two types of declaration they are separated with a semicolon color is red font size is 12 so this is basically a property colon value and then a semicolon if you have worked with json before is something similar to that you have a property colon value and then a semicolon okay so you have two declarations first declaration say color should be red the second declaration say font size is 12 points okay and this is how you write your css and the selector is basically saying where this rule has to be applied now selector is saying h1 which means it's saying all the h1 tags in that page should have color red and font size as 12 px so it is changing the h1 tag setting and saying that instead of black make it red instead of maybe 10 points or 15 points make it 12 points all right so this is how you write css we're going to look into this in the whole section we'll be writing css we'll be playing around it we'll changing a lot of styles in the html page as well but understand the purpose of css that's what i want you to understand here the purpose of css is to apply styling to your web page okay and this is one of the example of how do you write a css so once you apply the css your heading which is basically black in color which is plain html once you apply that css rule saying that color is red font size is 12 px it becomes you know 12 px and it becomes red in color so that's what the css is trying to do I just want you to understand what is the purpose of CSS. What is the job that CSS is doing it here? It is applying that styling to your web page. You have a default output and then you are basically changing that defaults by creating a CSS rule. Okay, we're going to see how to create a rule, how to add it, but understand the purpose of CSS here. All right, so let's create some CSS and have fun with designing the web page.